Hey everybody, so today I'm going to show you um, how to find all the, the root bridge, the root ports, the designated ports, and the alternate block ports, putting that all together in, in a scenario. So I have three real switches here. So if you don't already know how the spanning tree protocol works, how to find all those roles, port roles, all the, all the good stuff, um, I have a playlist on that, so I'll put it down in the description and watch them thoroughly through and once you get it down pat follow me along in this video so here i have again three real live switches here 2960s and 3750 in the top so let's jump right into it so who has the lowest bridge id so it's made up of the port um made up of the bridge priority and the mac address so if we look at the mac addresses here we'll find out that derp has the lowest one because it starts with a zero, right? This has zero, this has four, and this has five. Left to right, we compare the hexadecimal digits, and whoever has the lowest one, each time we go across from left to right, uh, wins, and that becomes the root bridge right away. So derp becomes the root bridge. Um, I haven't changed the Bridge priority of 32768 plus the VLAN. We have multiple spanning trees per VLAN. But anyways, um, I haven't changed that. So we have to look at the MAC address. So once you find the root bridge, all of those ports become designated right away. The reason why is because you need to find that one path to the root bridge. And if they were all in a blocking state, it wouldn't do much good. Doesn't make any sense. So right away, all of them go into a designated forwarding mode. So next, we need to find the root ports. But in order to understand that, we have to look carefully. It helps to look carefully at how we add the cost to the, um, the ports here. You don't just say, oh, this is... Uh, um, uh 19 because uh the link is uh fast ethernet so uh everything's 19. so that's going to get you into a little bit of trouble with uh, assigning port roles so first you need to look at the link so what does the port see it as so let's look at twy here let's look at twy so if we look at all the ports here specifically ones connected to derp because uh, these look like they have the lowest cost, right? It's the shortest path, but not necessarily. This could have a lower cost, but in this topology it doesn't because all of these are fast Ethernet. So this would be a cost of 19, 19, and this is just 19. So how does it get that? So from the root bridge here, it sends out a BPDU frame saying all kinds of stuff, saying claiming it's king, it's the, it's the root bridge now. Got to find its one. We got to find our one path to it, and it says it's a cost of zero, obviously because it's the root bridge. So it sends it out. Down port one and two, saying, "Hey, I'm the king, and cost is zero. So Twy says, "Okay, these ports are fast Ethernet here, four and five, so it'll add a cost of nineteen to both. Nineteen to both." So that's going to be a problem. So the cost ties right away. We don't have one port that has the lowest cost to this root bridge up here. So that's a little disappointing. So the next step for tiebreakers is the neighbor bridge ID. Well, that's going to be a problem because both of these ports connect to the same bridge here, the same switch these two ports here. It's not like one port is going off to one switch over here and another switch over there. Can't tie break on that. So they're both the same. It's the derp bridge ID. So if we can't isolate tie do a tie breaker for uh, the cost here, both of these tie and cost, both of these tie on the neighbor bridge ID. So the next would be the port priorities. So on switches they're different, but on here they're 128. Both are 128 by default. So that's going to be another problem. One's not lower than the other neighbor here. 
So the very last tiebreaker is the actual port number, the actual port number. So if we look at it, got it right up here. This is a different, uh, this is the other switch, but I think it's a good thing to note here. So cost of 19, here's where you see the priority, port priority, and the number. You got to be careful too because gigabit doesn't necessarily start at number one. It may continue on one through 24. As you can see here, one through four goes all up, you know, standard switches have 24 ports. Then gig zero slash one, gig zero slash two, it may be 25 and 26. So be careful. This is where you see the, um, the last tiebreaker, the actual port number. This is what the label is on the, the port on the switch, the physical port you can see. So if we look, one, this is the lowest here, neighbor port number. So this port here becomes the root port for this switch. Ta-da! Whew, that was a lot. I know, just bear with me. This might be long. So now we found the root port for this. Let's um, also, too, I probably should note for uh, completeness. Um, once this switch finds the root port, it goes out on the other ports saying, yo, or on other ports saying, yo, dude, out six and seven. Saying, yo, Flutter, uh, it's a cost of 19 to the root bridge through me, through Twy. So, uh, because this has added a cost of 19, this port. So it sends out PPD frames saying, yo, yo, guys, 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 I, I'm a cost of 19. And what Flutter does here is once it receives that on port 3 and 4, it adds a cost of 19. Right, so let me clear this. So this adds a cost of 19 on this port. And it adds a cost of 19 on this port. Right, because this port... Is fast Ethernet negotiated? That's its speed. You got to be careful. Just because it's gigabit doesn't mean it's a cost of four. You got to be careful. Um, whatever it's negotiated, whatever the port is running at, at the speed, it will reflect the cost. So this is running and negotiated at fast Ethernet. Just assume everything is fast Ethernet in this topology. I have fast Ethernet, so it has a cost of 19. So Flutter will go out other ports saying, "Yo." cost of 38 right because it had originally 19 through twi and it added another 19 through these ports so it kind of does that whole thing throughout all the way down the tree structure for just completeness just to show you the reason why i showed you that is because you got to be careful when you change the cost on a port um you'll notice um some changes right it helps to know um how these port roles come into play with costs as we'll see later on I'm going to do a separate um, video so this is part one scenario one uh, just finding all the the, the, the port roles so um, let's look at flutter so you know the drill lowest cost well this is a cost of 38 38 which you know we kind of already you know we added the what I just said before so this is a cost of 19 and 19. So this looks better, these two links, right? Because when the BPDU frames came down from this switch here is a cost of zero and a cost of zero. And on these ports, one and two, it added a cost of 19. Again, because that's the speed it was running at fast ethernet. And that's a cost of 19. So we tie on costs on these two ports. So the next is a neighbor bridge. Well, that's not going to work. It's the same bridge. So the next is the default port priority, and that's 128. Again, that's not going to work. So the last tiebreaker is the neighbor um, port number. So looking at the neighbor port numbers, which one's lower? Obviously three here. So this link, this side over here, port two becomes the root port for this switch. There's one root port for each switch. 
So this port here, number two, becomes the root port for this switch. So now after we found the root bridge, the uh, root ports, let's find um, the designated ports. So it's pretty easy. The rules, the same thing follows. Um, again, it's very much like the root ports. So to find all the designated ports, we have to find the lowest cost to the bridge right who which switch has the lowest cost of the bridge what i mean by that is so let's look at let's just take a look at a link let's do it link by link by link so let's take for example this link here between twine flutter so port seven and twine port four and flutter so which side becomes designated and which side becomes a blocked alternate port so how we do that is by looking at these switches here, Flutter and Twi that they're connected to, this link. So which switch has the lowest cost? Well, this has a cost of 19, this switch. We already know because it's advertising 19 to everybody else. And this is a cost of 19. Again, advertising to everybody else is a cost of 19. So it's tied because both switches say, hey, the cost is 19. One's not lower than the other. And if it did, that side would win the role of designated for this link. So the next step, the tiebreaker, would be the bridge ID. So since it's 32768, it hasn't changed the bridge priority. We have to look at the MAC address. So this is 4 and this is 5. Well, this side wins because it starts with a lower hexadecimal digit compared to left to right, just like the uh, bridge ID, finding the root bridge. So this side, twi, wins the role of designated. Let's go ahead and put that it's designated. And the same thing for port six for this link, right? Because we follow the same steps and this becomes designated. So that's pretty much it. Once you find each link's root port or designated ports, right? Once you found all of them, then everything else is an alternate block state. Pretty simple. So we can go ahead and say, hey, this is alternate blocked. We can't have two sides that are designated. That's a no-no. We don't want a, a loop. It can't be in a forwarding state. And here on Flutter port one, alternate blocked. Can't have two designated, doesn't make any sense. We only have one root port per switch, so that becomes the alternate block port. And these two also become alternate because, well, this side won, Twi won the, uh, the war for the designated ports over here, so the other side becomes um, alternate in a block state. So you'll notice that it tries to create this tree structure, hence the spanning tree. And the reason why the designated ports, when you find them, first starts out in the protocol with um, the lowest cost, then the name, and then the bridge ID, who has the lowest bridge ID, is because you want this tree structure where you have the root ports upstream going to the root bridge, and then the downstream, the fastest. Um, it's kind of hard to see with these three switches here, but if you add more switches, you'll start to see it this tree-like structure where this fastest um, path to the root bridge, you, you'll see um, here, let me, uh, let me get this paintbrush. So you'll notice that, that there's this path going here all the way up to the root bridge. Same for here, but probably not, a, um, you can't really see that here, right? So normally this would be a path going down here and you see a path going out here and then you might see other paths you know, like this this tree structure can't really see it again with just three switches but you notice because of that here this is blocked right so the colors would be amber here this would be blocked so you can see it stops any kind of loop so that's pretty much it for finding all the port roles.
for this one scenario. That was pretty easy. It wasn't too bad. So I hope this was helpful, and thank you for watching.